idea originally for the lineup when we got back together again was to try and kind of link a few of the sort of different eras of the band together and also to kind of uh, work with people that we felt would work, be able to work with each other. The big deal really, I suppose, was, was not wanting to be some fucking panto brand. It was always about what can we do now, what can we do that's kind of good and relevant and have we got anything that's good and relevant? And we kind of thought we did. Uh, so off we went. And we didn't really have any idea what the fuck would happen, where it would go. You just have to do stuff, don't you, and see, see where it takes you. I mean, to begin with, that lineup that played our first gig and our first few gigs had never played together. And obviously, you know, it changes, people change, and you, you find out more about people the longer you get to know them. Some people decided that it wasn't for them. Some of us decided that they weren't for us. And, and you move on the way we've always done it. It's always been a little bit of a, a merry-go-round. America was another kind of bit of an eye-opener. Uh, we'd never played there before. So sort of the first first night we got there, we stayed at someone's house that was probably more ridiculous than many of the squats that I used to live in in the 1980s. surprised at the kind of the sort of level of kind of enthusiasm for it and there were some really really fucking brilliant people and some really good interesting scenes. There you go man. Oh yeah this and guess what? Yeah. I've been I'll waiting do, to I'll see Antisex since I was in high school. It's one of my favorite bands. Never thought I'd see it man I've been waiting 21 years. Easy. I'm, I'm flabbergasted that they're actually even here. These guys are the originators the the masters, finally in America. We drove eight, eight hours to get to Pittsburgh here, so it was a drive, but totally worth it. We drove three days from Minneapolis, Minnesota, all the way to New York City. Without sleeping. Without, oh, okay, okay. They killed it. It was the best show I've seen in years. From UK to NYC, anti-sect, holding down, motherfucker. Anti-sect keeps it real. They haven't played in 20 years, and they're older than 40, and they still have it. That album, when uh, times are down, sometimes that album, uh, you know, kept my fist in the air. I know I'm punk for reasons I've felt in my heart forever for my whole life, but this has encouraged me to keep going. And we're on our way to the venue. Blackwater uh, is the name of the venue. It's a semi-illegal-ish DIY venue. There's, it's a cool collective sort of thing. There's a bunch of, um, there's a record store, a screen printing shop, rehearsal studios, a music venue, a recording studio. You know, like pretty much everything you can Why ever need. Why semi-illegal? Well, because the landlords know that there are rehearsal studios, and that's okay. But the landlord does not know that they're doing gigs. It was good, it was good, it was, it was inspiring, but also you're kind of well aware of the differences in the UK and America, and that kind of makes you understand that when people try and resist shit in America, 
there's a lot more at stake. I live in a punk house up in an area called the Hill District with six others. We apply our politics to how we run the house, how we run everything. Uh, many of the punks, some are active political wise and here in Pittsburgh. So it's, it's what those old guys were doing over in England is, it still exists, it's happening here, so. It's, it's hard to be human in Virginia because uh, it's a very Republican place here. Not only is it a Republican place, but it's, it's very oppressive against any bill of, it's, it, it's oppressive against all of our rights. It's like there's a large presence of police brutality. When like you're being fucking arrested, when you're going to jail, when you're basically kidnapped by the government, but you're thinking of like, when I was in jail in New York City, what was that for? Uh, the Republican National Convention, I was protesting and um, saying no to George Bush before the fucking war started in Iraq. Anti-sect and the partisans were in my head when I was in fucking jail uh, for three days, not knowing when I was gonna get out and all my freedom was gone. The thing that like kept my spirit alive and like helped me to like encourage people around me was fucking punk. And it was like, it was anti-sect, it was partisans, it was zounds. And people in fucking jail knew these songs. It was like anthems for like our life and our freedom. This was a high point for us all, really. We had a really rapid response off the fans there. People were diving off the PA speakers. I had some guy fracture his skull. I've never seen such insane sort of stage diving, really. Had an indoor bar, outdoor stage, with all these kind of mezzanines and balconies and all sorts around it. It's quite a sort of Roman, kind of Christian, sort of feeding to the lion situation, I thought. I mean, that's one thing I must say, is that everyone's been so lovely to us, everyone's looked after us and stuff, you know. When I joined the band, Pete was keen to make a new record. That was his impetus from the start, really, to me. I want this band to make another record progress these were some of the songs that we used to have and we started kind of thinking about the recording and uh, what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. it was kind of around about the time that Tim decided like he couldn't commit to it um, it's pretty much pretty shortly after we came back from the States I think America just kind of did his head in a little bit when he kind of realized what it might involve so yeah his, his final gig was at Roadburn uh, it was a good one thankfully <laughs> Well, it's a bit gut-wrenching. The journey's been a blast, it's been fun, but I can't balance the band and family life. You know, I'll give it two years of touring and rehearsing. I've had a go. I've done things, been places that I'd never would have gone to or seen, but although the band has been a big part of my life and is really important to me, when I've got other commitments and other expenditure, then I can't just put the band before my family, do you know what I mean? 
and dollar. We've got a singer in called Chris after Tim, who I'd known from some London bands before. Um, I have the band had played various shows with him, he's a really good lad. He came to Russia with us, which was awesome. And Chris was excellent. We had we had a lot of things in common and it was kind of moving along pretty well. We did his first gig in uh, in Sweden and then I went and had a fucking heart attack which uh, which put us back another little while. After that we seemed to lose Lawrence then. Lawrence was the next one to go when we started knuckling down to record the album and it came to the nitty gritty of you know getting a sound and you know really you know under the microscope. And he just couldn't put the hours in, couldn't put the time in to kind of getting out what we needed to be got out from it. And then shortly after that we had the same issue with Chris because he was too busy teaching. He was a high school teacher teaching humanities. <laughs> And we kind of reached a bit of an impasse where things just weren't moving along quickly enough and that's when, when John cropped up. I was with the band from 84 to 86. So it was only two years, but then when you're in your 20s, tw two years is a long time. And it felt a lot, like a lot longer. And in that time, you know, we toured Holland as well and we, we did quite a lot of gigs. Um, and we recorded the Out From The Void single or EP as well, of course. It felt like very soon after I joined, we, we sort of whittled ourselves down to a three-piece, which is quite interesting because it's exactly what's happened again this time. Is it me? You might ask yourself. It was probably the thing that regenerated the whole thing, is kind of enthusiasm and, and energy, kind of like, gave us a bit of a kick up the arse, really. felt good, doing it as a three piece felt good. It was a bit weird to begin with, trying to figure out, fuck, do we need to get a singer? I didn't really know what I was doing. No one knew what they were doing. We all had a go, we all tried it. Tried a couple of people, didn't really work out. And, and in the end, we just thought, look, this works between the three of us. Let's try and make it work between the three of us. the studio a fair few times over the last few years trying to nail the vision and the sound that the songs eventually turned out to be you know uh, we had a couple of failed attempts where we were just playing too fast for the groove of the songs and we hadn't really rehearsed them enough to be record ready it's kind of like a, a process of just figuring out what fitted uh, I think it worked I think we worked it out you know it took us a long while to work it out we had three goes at it we recorded it in bits and pieces it wasn't kind of done as you'd expect, you know, normal, normal albums, you, you go and spend a couple of weeks in the studio and it's done, you know. This took us, since I came back, the best part of two years. It was a real blood, sweat and tears job, I think, on, on everybody's part. We put everything we got into this.
good kind of chunk of what this band's always been about has been the lyrics and the sentiments and, and it was an important thing, it was an important thing for me to, to, to make sure that element was still strong and, and sort of written in an honest way, something that I still believed in. I couldn't, I can't write stuff that's like, you can't pander to what people think you should be. I don't agree with 100% of every, everything that Pete believes in. Wouldn't it be really weird if I did? With three mature, different people who share core values who have a real synergy on the things that matter. I was kind of conscious about the first thing that we brought out and I, and I kind of thought that I really wanted to represent something that kind of represented the people that were involved in the scene that I grew up with. And that was a kind of a counterculture, it was that, this kind of like punk thing, the, the anarcho thing. It's, you know, it's meant a lot to me and it's always meant a lot to me throughout my life. Um, you know, the Stop the Cities, the, all of that thing that later became the Occupy movements and, and you know, the G Summit demonstrations and stuff like that. The Black really is kind of a song that celebrates that culture. So how I got involved with Antisect is through Peter Lyons. He's my namesake, so I'm Jimmy Lyons, he's Peter Lyons. So he's my brother from another mother. <laughs> This stuff is great. This stuff is loud, heavy, metallic, but also got a message to it. And that's what's drawn me to it, this, the message. I'm hoping for better and greater things, more unity, more people coming together around strong ideas of freedom, justice, and basically truth telling, man. Yeah. Whilst we were doing it, we, we were obviously like giving a bit of thought to how we were going to put it out. And it's a kind of a, it's a weird thing, you know, when you're sort of doing something that takes you a long time and, and you put a lot of effort into something. You kind of think, well, you want as many people as you fucking can get to hear it. You know, whether they like it or not, it's immaterial. What you want them to do is to be able to hear it. So we began to, to, to think, okay, that's the road we want to go down. How do we, how do, we do that? And uh, weirdly enough, Rise Above kind of presented itself. I love the band Antisect and what it stands for. So from my point of view, I'm happy that they've got to the point where they've done an album that they're pleased with and I'm in a situation to release it. You know? Very focused, very thought out. It's a great album. It's where it's where they are now, and it's very much them, and it's their record, and it's their sound, and I think it's very unique, actually. 
the band was kind of defined by its first album, which was you know fucking thirty odd years ago, and, a, and an EP that came out a little while after. Um, so I think some people probably have difficulty coming to terms with the fact that you know we're thirty odd years older and it's not going to be the same. So you're going to get a different product really, regardless. Um, nobody's going to kind of keep on churning out the same thing, are they? Because if you keep doing that, you're getting nowhere really, and you're just preaching to the converted. You're not trying to open it up to any kind of new audience. You want it like a little closed thing that belongs to you and your mates. And that's not really a very proactive sort of positive attitude in my eyes. You know, In Darkness was was a very kind of, in a lot of respects, quite a bleak album. It's uh, And the title was kind of bleak in itself. And what we wanted to do this time around was really represent something that was a bit more positive and, and forward thinking. And the rising of the lights really is, is, is just a phrase that represents an opening up of people's minds and kind of, you know, ideas rather than rather than a closing down. The musical aspect of it is one thing, but the ideology is something that's way more beyond the way you look or the way you sound. You know what I mean? And, and to be, for it to be suddenly turned into something that is now considered to be, oh, we look back on 82 when we were into Discharge and crafts and stuff and that was the glory days it's like talking about the fucking your mum and dad talking about 60s when they were mods you know what i mean it's not to me it was never about that and it's fucking should never be about that it's about what the fuck's going on in the world look around you know what i mean Whatever you think of the music, whether you think it's not crossed punk enough or it's not whatever enough or it's too metal or, or, or whatever the fuck you want to think, the sentiments are quite plainly there and you know, if you can't understand that it is 2017, not 1987, then you know, you have my understanding but not my sympathy. So we've been very lucky uh, with Rise Above to have a two album deal. Um, they were only going to give us a one album deal, but we knew that when we were recording the first one, we'd got so much material left over. We were even talking about doing a double album at one point and just thought, we, I think we're going a bit too far now. Um, but what it does mean is this first album, Rising of the Lights, is actually um, not everything that we'd recorded. It's the stuff that needs to be on this first album that comes together and makes a coherent package. But there's other stuff that we've recorded and other stuff that we're yet to record that's already been written that's going to be on the second album. Yeah. 